Hello, everybody. Welcome to the weekend edition of Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So I apologize for not having this up yesterday on Friday, but I had a surprise going away party to attend for a good friend of mine on Thursday night. And it didn't start. It wasn't like supposed to start until like 11 o'clock at night. And I had to be at um, work on Friday at 11 a.m. And so I knew that it just was not going to go down. (laughs) I was gonna get home way too late and I was not gonna get up in time to have, to record uh, the reading and then get to my shift on Friday. So I apologize, but here we are today. Um, It is a beautiful, sunny Saturday. The sun is definitely going to make an appearance here it is currently rising above the buildings is going to be all up in my face in about 20 minutes so (laughs) just know that um but i hope everybody's having a great weekend so far um this is going to be a general energy reading for the weekend for friday uh december 27th no i'm sorry friday december 28th through sunday the 30th Yes, we are almost done with the year, guys. This is a little insane. Um, I mean, I'm... I I don't even know what to say about that. (laughs) So this is just a general energy reading, okay? Um, It's not love-specific. It's not science-specific. It's not career-specific. It's not specific to anything. It's just what spirit would like to speak with us about today for the weekend. Yeah, so it's a general energy reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, Energies are fluid, so this may be something that happens to you today or this weekend. It may not be. Who knows? But either way, there are probably some really good nuggets of information you can take away from this, so I encourage you guys to hang out. Yeah? Alrighty, cool. So, enough rambling. Let's get straight to it, guys. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the weekend of Friday, December 28th through Sunday, December 30th. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. So um, I do want to start by saying that I don't know about y'all, but I'm having trouble getting out of bed. (laughs) Like, maybe it's just, it might just be like the fact that it's the winter season. And to be quite honest here in New York, it was like damn near 60 degrees yesterday. Like I went out, I got home really late um, and ended up having to go back out really quick to grab something from a store. And it was like around like 8.30. <laughs> Excuse me. It was like 8:30, 9 o'clock, and it was muggy outside. Like it felt like it was spring, and it's winter. Like it was 60 degrees on the day of the solstice here. So I don't know if it's like the really warm weather where I am, or maybe it's just the fact that you know it's supposed to be winter and. I just want to like hibernate or something, but I've been exhausted. Well, also it's, it's the energy stuff. It's the shifts and the waves and all of this. I've just been, and I know I keep saying this, we've been talking about this. Like I mentioned it on during the last happy hour, but I just been so exhausted. I literally just don't want to get out of bed in the morning (laughs) and it doesn't help that, you know, I'm on winter break from, from school right now. So I don't really have to get up that early, you know, other than, you know, having our morning coffees here, which is always going to be the first thing I do in the morning. It's just like, well, it's Saturday or I really don't have to be, (laughs) be up so early, but I don't know guys, whatever. But I'm like the tiredness. I've been so tired lately. (sighs) But it's okay. We're going to get through this, guys. We're going to do it. All right. One more shuffle. Ooh. Ooh. That's okay. Leave it like that. Let's get into it. Let's see what we've got. For the weekend. 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 
Hey, a photo of the weekend. Nothing, huh? Oh, there we go. Oh, that looks like the Three of Swords. Oh, boy. Okay. Leave it there. Okay. That was the Three of Swords. Ooh, chow. All right, underneath the deck is the Hierophant. There's some deep learning and actually some teaching that's happening right now. We've got, wow. Wow. All right, guys. So the theme of the weekend is powering through heartbreak. We have the Ten of Wands in reverse, and that's coupled or that's accompanied by the Three of Swords and strength, okay? Underneath that, we also have moon child and the sun. So, and speaking of which, the sun is about to creep up over the buildings over here, which is kind of cool. Um, so already there's a lot of, there's a lot of illumination happening. There's a lot of teaching, there's a lot of learning, all right? Um, and this is all through learning, learning from heartbreak and, and, and finally having the strength to release burdens and move on with one's life in some way. Um, teaching others to stand strong on their own two feet without needing someone else to lift you up. Being your own support system, in a sense. <laughs> but someone is finally having the strength to walk away, to release burdens, to let go. I wanna, before I go any further, I do wanna read uh, Moonchild because I feel like I, there's a specific, um, it, it has a specific point in this that I'm not quite picking up yet. It is a unique card in this deck, and it actually hasn't come out much, so I do want to read this really quickly here. The last, Actually, the last time this card came out was the weekend of the full moon in Cancer. The weekend of the solstice, actually. Moonchild, here we go. Okay. Uh, ha, ha, ha. The key words here, or the key meaning, is standing beneath the crescent of the moon, a moon child rests in quiet contemplation, feeling the transition of the phases of this great celestial body. Always in her orbit, pulling at her emotions and pushing her in creative directions, she knows she is deeply in tune with, the sh with its shimmering light. When this card shows up, it asks you to consider how you, cult how you can cultivate your own sacred relationship with the moon. This luminous beacon functions as a great celestial doorway into new spaces and opportunities within and around you, helping you see beyond the limitations of your lived reality. Through keeping track of her ebb and flow, as well as our feelings and sensations each day, we can refine our intuition and boundaries each month and help, or to help support more informed choices when it comes to our heart. Oh, yes. Are there energies that need to be released? Is it time to start a new project? What is internally or externally inhibiting you from rising, growing, or healing? How are you delaying your own productivity? Wow. Keywords are magic, ritual, connection, abundance, and manifestation. This is absolutely perfect. I really feel like we're all coming to a point where we're learning to say when enough is enough. I mean, that, there you have it. Right there, there you have it. In the 10 of wands in reverse, three of swords and strength. Learning when to say enough is enough. And to move on with your life. To lay down the burden. Because the more you carry the burden of the situation, the more you entertain the energy of the Three of Swords. And with the Hierophant here, this is... The, the Hierophant can talk about convention, society, uh, dogma, religion, uh, university, marriage, uh, the status quo, all that stuff, right? 
but I also see another um, meaning in it, and that is uh, a representation of the higher self. And I really feel like there is a unique opportunity here and now in this instance of the time-space reality in which you can connect with yourself on a much deeper level. You can really, we really have the opportunity to, to learn some deep lessons and to grow in ways that we may not have been able to accomplish in past lives. All of, a lot is really coming full circle here. So what I'm really picking up, and I, to, to be quite honest, this is, a, this is resonating with me pretty, pretty well. Um, I had some really intense, really interesting dreams last night. Uh, and a lot of it, uh, most of it was me crossing paths with all these other people that I had been friends with earlier in life. And it was just like a quick little thing, like literally we were running into each other, crossing paths, this, that, and the other thing. And um, when I woke up, <laughs> the song New Rules by Dua Lipa is like on repeat in my head. And I really feel like you can, and I know that that came out in uh, a few days ago in relation to, you know, a relationship that we might be dealing with or trying to release ourselves from, trying to move on from. Uh, but that really could be applied to anything, anything toxic in your life. That song, if you haven't heard that song, please go check it out. It's fantastic. New Rules by Dua Lipa. But, um, what I just realized here, also, you have an instance of the moon and the sun here. Moon child and then the sun. The sun is talking about illumination for the most part. You have two energies of Leo here also, strength and the sun. Um, but there's a great deal of illumination that's happening. And also, the sun is saying that, you know, things are going really well. If you're choosing to release these burdens with the Ten of Wands in reverse... Good Lord, 2.22 again. I, I swear to God, guys, I was at my shift uh, uh, yesterday and I was watching Betsy's video. She did an, up, an energy update. If you don't know Betsy, she's fantastic. Check her out. She's one of my absolute best friends. Um, her channel is Fearless Intuition. But I was watching her energy update that she was doing live yesterday and I noticed it was 12.22. And then I looked at the viewers and at that moment there was 222 viewers at that time and then maybe like an hour later i was on my laptop doing work and i looked at the my gmail icon and the in the top of the screen and it said there were 222 unread emails in my inbox and then there were a few moments throughout that day maybe like two or three other moments where 222 was coming up back up and then i just looked at the counter and it was 12 minutes and 22 seconds i'm like what is with all of this 222? And to me, and, and um, I'm, I'm starting to understand that the meaning of that is bringing balance into relationships and dealings with people. And that actually falls right in line with this message because if you're constantly carrying burdens, if you're carrying the brunt of a burden within your relationship with someone, that's only going to break your heart. Things are not balanced. Okay, and I'm going to use our favorite word between Betsy and I, allowing. If you are choosing to carry these burdens, you're allowing your heart to be broken. Okay, and by not choosing, by, not, by choosing not to carry these burdens any longer, you are choosing to have the strength to pull these swords out of your own heart and heal. But you have the sun, which is illuminating between the, hier the Hierophant and the sun. You're illuminating ways in your life that you can let go, release burden. And then also the sun is saying that you are doing well. by listening to yourself and learning the lessons and choosing not to 
not to put up with fuckery, not to put up with just take getting crumbs from someone. We don't accept crumbs. And I don't want any, I, 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 I hope no one is taking that in the sense where we're being selfish or um, elitist or something. No, it's not even about that. It's about the six, it's about the energy of the six of pentacles, the balance between give and take in a relationship. If the, ba if, if, if the reciprocity is not there, there is no relationship to be had. That's a little extreme. I mean, you could still associate with somebody, but I wouldn't even recommend you do that. It's like, we're coming out of that age too. It's like, why even waste your time with someone that's not going to give back um, in equal measure that you're giving into the situation, right? Like why, why even waste your time with that? At that point, they're just energy vampires, narcissists even, sociopaths. They just want to take from you. They don't really want to give back. So why waste your energy on that type of situation? <laughs> okay. So let's get into some clarification now. Okay, so I'm going to start by clarifying the top row. I don't know if you guys can hear it in my voice, but I'm very much like, I personally feel very, I wanna say exhausted, but that's not even the word for it. It's like a, a, a combination between exhaustion and being fed up. Like I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not here for it today. I'm not here for the tomfoolery. I'm not here for the fuckery. I'm just for, for people speaking to you as if they're your friends. And maybe they are your friends. Now me, I'm personally in a little bit of a unique situation in which, you know, I have this channel and I do, I guide people. And that's like my job now, <laughs> which I love, don't get me wrong. So I am in a little bit of a unique position. Uh, and I know that there are quite a few people out there, you know, that I've been friends with, or that I've recently become friends with, that can't necessarily give back as much as I give into the situation. And in that case, I understand, but it's still draining. But what I'm really talking about here are those people that consistently just take and take and take from you because they know they can. That's where you're releasing the burdens. Ten of Wands in reverse, okay? But I'm just not, I'm not, not here for it. <laughs> not having it today. <laughs> okay, so let's get some clarification going. We're gonna start, we're gonna clarify the top row because it's not really, it's, it's all like flowing together. It's part of the storyline. So we're gonna clarify the top row, then we're gonna do the bottom row. So. Ten of Wands in reverse, Three of Swords, and Strength, Spirit. Please clarify. Woo. Knight of Pentacles. We're going to do one more pull. Whoa! Hey, look at that. Wheel of Fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune fell right next to the Hierophant here. Queen of Wands. Look at this. Look at this, y'all. Okay. Underneath the deck, we have the Hermit. So what's influencing this change? What's influencing this change in the Wheel of Fortune is the energies of the Hermit. Self-discovery, all right? We have the Knight of Pentacles. It's falling on the Three of Swords. So, so you're, you're, you're healing, but it's a slow and steady process. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, which is fine. You have, wow, the High Priestess and the Moon. <laughs> So with this combination of the High Priestess and the Moon here, this, is, this to me is revealing secrets. Even though, you know, the Moon upright is about like hidden things, fears and whatnot. When it's coupled with the High Priestess like this right now, the High Priestess is saying to me that she's helping you see through the illusion. Because she can see, the High Priestess is 
really extremely secretive herself, but she's also very intuitive. And she's not necessarily secretive. She's not secretive like the moon is secretive in the sense that the, she's trying to deceive you. She just doesn't talk. She doesn't speak all the time. She, uh, this is mostly because of she, because she understands, she, she, she has an intimate understanding of the law of free will and why it's been put into place here. And so she will only guide you or she will only reveal things to you, number one, when she knows you're ready for the re revelation, but number two, when you ask for it in a sense. And I'm not necessarily saying you're stepping to her and literally saying, hey, can you help me? It might be in some cases, but um, in others, there's, a situ there's an energy of which, you know, you've been working with her and you've been following her guidance all along. And the more you do that, you know, the more you, uh, you give her permission to continue helping you. And so in this case, she is helping reveal the secrets to you. Now, look at this. There are three, now this is, it's a feminine dominant deck, don't get me wrong, but you have, four instances of femininity here. You have the hermit, which is a feminine character. You have the moon, the high priestess, and the queen of wands, all women. So we're talking feminine energy here. We're talking feminine energy taking their power back, standing in their truth, standing in their power, and not allowing anyone to give them shit for it. Not Straight up not giving a flying fuck what other people have to say about it. Because in these cases, these other people have been wrong. And okay, I know, there's really, the, the, technically there's no such thing as right or wrong, but they have been acting in a way that has been detrimental, we'll say. Doesn't mean it's wrong because ultimately everybody learns, but they have been acting in ways that have done this, created this. Three of Swords. Now, before you get all up on your soapbox, realize that there is an energy of allowing this to happen, but that's not happening anymore. Wheel of Fortune. Times are a changing, y'all. Cycles are coming to an end, and they're coming to an end because you are the one that's putting the stop to it. Knight of Pentacles. Slowly but surely, you are saying, piece by piece, you are saying, no, 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 absolutely not. Hell fucking no, no, no. Goodbye, I'm done. Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> <sighs> and it's all because, it's all because you have been doing the work or you're getting to this position because you are doing the work or you need to do the work to get to this position. The hermit. You have to do the soul searching. You have to take responsibility. You have to take control. The Queen of Wands doesn't st doesn't stand here and say, "Woe is me." She says, "Holy shit, I don't like that. How do I change it?" And she does it. She takes the power in her own hands and she changes that shit. Why? Because she can. She's a badass bitch, and she can do whatever the fuck she wants. <laughs> Now, yes, that can get detrimental when her ego gets involved, and the Queen of Wands can be pretty ego egoic sometimes. Can be pretty selfish, but that's the suit of the Wands. So can the King of Wands. But she's upright here. This is this is the Divine Feminine in corporeal form, in the Minor Arcana, in the 3D. Whereas this is this is what uh, this is also. I mean, whereas in the in the Major Arcana or in the spiritual world, she's the Empress. And the Empress is the Queen of Queens. So you could really say, you could really say that any of the Queens and any of the Kings could be the uh, Divine Feminine or Divine Masculine. But when it comes to like say, and this is a definition that I got through the Twin Flame journey, this is like, a de this is like the, the expression of the Divine Feminine in Twin Flame status. But now that's just become, to me that's just become, this is another a stronger representation of the divine feminine in the physical because of the fiery aspect, because of the flame, the spiritual aspect that the wands represents. Because the wands is a suit of spirituality and passion and fire and inspiration, creativity, that kind of thing. Okay, so next, 
we're going to clarify the moon child and the sun. So we have the moon child and the sun come out from the original deck. So that's like a sun and moon energy, but then the actual moon came out in the clarifying deck, which is kind of cool. <laughs> All right, so let's clarify moon child and the sun. Please, spirit. Oh boy. Underneath the deck, we have the magician. And we've got the counterpart to that queen of wands, the king of wands. We've got the star. So now we have the sun, moon, and the stars, which is cool. And we have the eight of wands. So let's talk about this. To me, this is what's going, wow, this is great. What's going on here is we have a balance between masculine and feminine energy. Up here in the top, we have the feminine energy, which is the inner reality, I'm going to say. And this is the energies of understanding the emotions behind the situation, being in touch with your emotions, being in touch with your true desires, being in touch with who you truly are on a deep and intimate level. And then down here you have the expression, the action. You have the masculine who is in communication with the divine feminine. You have the divine masculine, right? The divine masculine is in communication with the divine feminine. They're working together in tandem. The divine feminine is, is in the energies of creating the blueprint with the Knight of Pentacles. And the divine masculine says, all right, cool. So this is how we're going to do it. And the action is taken. Eight of Wands. Action is taken. Communication is, is, is flowing. But this, to me, is more action. Uh, the Eight of Wands can talk about communication, yes. Swift, fast communication, like text messages, emails, blah, 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 uh, little short conversations, quick phone calls, that kind of thing. But the Eight of Wands is also about decisive action, swift, pinpoint, bullseye action, like the Archer. The Eight of Wands is, uh, in other decks, uh, uh, in this deck, actually, the Tarot Apocalypsis, this one right here, that I use for the Twin Flame uh, readings. It's the deck that I use for the Divine Masculine. That is actually, the Eight of Wands in that deck is depicted as an archer. The Eight of Wands is the energies of the archer. The Eight of Wands is also often re um, uh, representative of Sagittarian energy because the Sagittarius is the archer, right? So this is um, aiming and hitting your target, bull's eye, swift, fast, like how an, ar uh, how an arrow moves through the air. So this is the action that's being taken by the divine masculine within, right? Because that balance has come into play and the healing comes into play. The star, wish fulfillment. What is your wish fulfillment? To be happy, to be free. <laughs> be free, be free. <laughs> <laughs> the release of all of these burdens with the Ten of Wands in reverse, that is the cause of your heartbreak, the Three of Swords. But this is not a situation, and this is, the, the universe just like slapped me in the face with this a little bit. Not really, but they really pushed this forward when I said it. This is not, this is not a time where you can sit back and say, oh, so-and-so did this to me. No, you allowed it. But when you are choosing to release this Ten of Wands energy, you are no longer allowing this to happen. You are literally setting yourself up to have these daggers removed from your heart and to heal and to change the cycle. Okay? And underneath the clarifying deck, at this point, we now have the magician. And to me, this is the, the divine feminine and the divine masculine coming together working in tandem, working hand in hand, side by side, in order to manifest the new. I don't know if the lighting is all screwed up now. The sun is in my face. Hold on a second, I'm just gonna...
pull the blinds back, even though I'm so sorry to do this to you, Mr. Sun. We love you. <laughs> but I'm being blinded. Blinded by the light. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, cool. So, now we're going to move into the oracle section here. And start with the animal spirit guides. All right, guys. We're gonna take uh, one message here from the animal spirits, please. Thank you so much, spirit. Best message, please, in relation to today's reading. Woo! All right, we've got two. <laughs> Look at that. The lion and the scorpion came back out. Underneath the deck is the frog, but those fell face down, so I'm not gonna take them. But we've got hyena. And we've got deer. Uh, hyena is actually pretty... Um, it's pretty perfect, to be honest. Hyena. Humor, wit, sarcasm. The hyena personality is a jokester and crowd pleaser, but below the surface there are unfulfilled dreams to be realized. When the hyena card appears, it's time to reflect on your reliance on sarcasm and humor to express your truth. And are you using jokes to hide old resentments in relationships or to mask things that you feel uncomfortable discussing? What would happen if you took your goals seriously? When in balance, hyena is charming, witty, and fun to be around. But when out of balance, hyena is scrappy, petty, and suspicious. To bring into balance, one needs to practice some sobriety. And I got, as I was reading this, I got a flash of, you know, that person that just constantly makes jokes about some things. And then after a while, your intuition peaks up or perks up and you're kind of like, wait, are you, are you joking? Or is that like... Are you serious? Like, is that really something that's happening? And the person's like, oh, nah, nah, I'm just kidding. And when really deep down, it's like, no, do you need to talk? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Come on, don't worry about it. I was just making a joke. God, get off it. Oh, right. So something is wrong. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. And then finally, we have deer. Loving. Intuitive, graceful, the mother. The deer represents the feminine aspects of earth energy. This energy is available to all creatures, regardless of gender, but is especially potent in new parents. During the first few days, they are fully present, nurturing, and calm. Their inner beauty radiates and a sense of grace calms the room. A deer personality affects others in this way, drawing them toward a quiet tenderness. The deer card may appear when a birth or celebration of new life draws near, or when a situation calls for absolute gentleness and compassion. When in balance, deer is receptive, compassionate, and nurturing. When out of balance, deer is concerned and protective. To bring into balance, one needs nature and maybe to have some time with some children. And I really see deer as like the queen of pentacles energy. <clears throat> All right. And I will say that, you know, you do have a new life budding as you release Ten of Wands energy, as you release burdens from your life. And you, I would say this situation absolutely calls for the utmost compassion for everyone involved, even for those people that you could be like leaving behind or cutting out of your life because they're just energetic vampires or whatever. There is still compassion needing to be held for them regardless of what may have gone down because you have to understand that they're going through their own struggles as well okay all right so 
closing message. Please excuse me if you hear my stomach rumbling. <laughs> I'm a little hungry, but closing message here for the weekend. December 28th through the 30th, Spirit. Let's see what we've got. Thank you so much, Spirit. There it is. Wow. Wow, guys. Look at this. Card number 41. Goddess Ishtar and Astrophilite. Astrophilite. Daring rebirth. Good Lord. <laughs> And 41 boils down to a five, y'all. Change. Change, change, change. I will drink to that. Cheers. <laughs> Alrighty. Here we go. Daring Rebirth. We bring you the empowerment of Daring Rebirth. The bold spirit in you claims the divine defiance of the phoenix. It refuses defeat at every turn. No matter who or what may need to seek, may excuse me. No matter who or what may seek to overpower your spirit, your peace, your loving heart, and your wild optimism, you shall triumph in a divine and daring rebirth. Do not limit yourself with expectations, whether from another or your own mind. There is so much possible for you, a radically different and new you to become. Believe, and so shall it be. Hmm. Okay. That's good. Uh, the message has gotten across here. So there it is, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. For tuning in. Thank you for your patience with me and my crazy life and crazy schedule. Um, but I love you all so much. I wish you guys a, a, a really fantastic weekend moving forward. Um, uh, it is possible that I may do some happy hour this evening. It depends. Um, I'm excited because Missy of Saltwater Heels, Heels to Row is in Brooklyn today and I did get a ticket to see her. So I am super excited. Um, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do happy hour tonight. So we might. I'll let you guys know. I will post it. Um, if, if I will be able to do it. Um, otherwise, other than that, I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow for our weekly Twin Flame conversation. Now, for those of you that are not Twin Flames, I am being specifically guided to communicate this to you guys. Um, if you don't like necessarily identify with the Twin Flame journey or whatnot, don't really even need to know what that is about. But I would encourage you maybe to stop by and participate because the readings are become, at least from, from my point of view on my channel, the Twin Flame readings are becoming about the divine feminine and divine masculine energies within, of which we all have. So this is not necessarily just about a divine counterpart um, in the physical world. This is more about the divine counterparts within all of us, okay? So if you feel intrigued to do so, I don't know why that came up, but um, I feel like some of you might be interested in checking that out, even if you don't necessarily resonate with the Twin Flame uh, relationship thing. Come by, check it out, see maybe it'll resonate with you. Yeah? Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day and a great weekend, and I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.